a pleasure being here today. I am uh, going to veer more not towards my uh, personal life but maybe my professional journey what uh, I've been, I'll be taking you through today. But it's been a very eventful journey I would say so far. I belong to the 2010 batch of IAS and um, I've been working for about nine years now in the IAS. So uh, that's my journey which I'll be taking you through. My journey started with me being a very active student. I would say active in other ways, not just in education. I was uh, doing a lot of extracurricular activities throughout my school days and I happened to change 14 schools. That was a very big uh, uh, task uh, for us uh, in, at that point of time because people used to say, where's your continuity in education? But my education mostly, I should say, thanks to my parents, was home education, school education was so-so. So, -so. so my, my, I should thank my mother for being my best uh, teacher and taking this journey so far. I was an excellent student, but uh, after my 10th, scored well, then um, I suddenly gave a shocker to my family. I said I will be doing uh, arts instead of science. So everybody was like, what? What are you doing? Then uh, a lot of people counseled me, not my parents of course, but the other family members said, how do you want to be successful in life if you're not going to opt for maths or science in your college? So. Confusing time for a person who's just finished her 10th standard. So I was really worried and I went to my parents. So then started my journey, I would say. This was what my father told me. My father, a former bureaucrat, he himself, uh, he was always telling me things through uh, some motivational quotes. So he gave me the first one that you see on screen there. And he said, do you want to be successful or significant? That started my journey and I said, okay, here I'm, I am going to pursue my dreams. So I did arts, I, I was an excellent student again all through and I finished graduation from the London School of Economics. Then people said, yeah, she's successful. Because I joined a private job, which was earning quite a lot, so-called a dream job for a lot of people. And I continued on that journey for uh, about two years. Then again, one day, I just had this grand awakening again. Am I being successful or am I being significant? Am I making a significant change? Then again, I had to do a rethink and a career jump. I came back to the civil services because having seen it and the impact it can have on a lot of lives, I decided, let me, let me take this journey. And I took the exam, cleared it, here I am, and serving my own city, uh, which is, I hail from Hyderabad. So again, this is a city I know. This is a city I've grown up with. And I had the wonderful opportunity to serve here again. So what do I do? So the same uh, quotation, I would say, takes me forward here too. What contribution am I making to the city that I, uh, I, I can say that I've, I've contributed something good to the city? So this drove me and I will come to the last uh, quotation in the end, but which can actually tell you my motivation for this journey further. So. This is what none of us see in our city. We all see the wonderful highways, wonderful buildings, high rises, everything. But have we seen this? We might have, but we don't, we tend to ignore it. So this was my journey beginning where I saw this is the dump yard that the city has. It's a common story across the country. You'll find it in many places. But then, this is my job too. So what am I doing to reduce this? And then I realized as I was going through this journey that as, as a person of Hyderabad, as a resident of the city, how do I perceive this after seeing this? So I started with myself. 
I said, okay, let me first transform and see how I can do it. So I started home composting. It was a difficult journey again. My mate took one month of convincing. And then uh, I moved on to my office. I made the first green office in Telangana. By, by simply re do, redoing the entire processes. I had to take my team along, convince them. At that point of time when I was talking about green governance, which was five years ago, None of my team were convinced. They said, Madam, why are we doing this? We are supposed to do drains, we are supposed to do roads, we are supposed to do uh, basic amenities. I said, this is basic amenities. We need to convince ourselves that we need to work towards our city, our well-being, because it's, it's our health and our environment. So starting with that, my home, I, I'm a home composter myself and then I segregate. And then uh, we took the journey to the office and we made it a green office, which is a plastic band office and a lot of other green initiatives like water saving and all were incorporated into it. Then I said, okay, let's, this was a success. So th this started motivating us further as a team also. So we said, okay, why don't we take it to the city? Why don't we make the city also more eco-friendly and more greener and more better? So we started with smaller initiatives. The, uh, the pictures that you see are uh, things we made out of tires and drums which were lying around in our offices, in our uh, vehicle yards. And we collected the plastic from our office and started putting them onto the roads as art pieces. It bought the, the appreciation was immense. There was a lot of perception change in a lot of people in the city itself that this could be done. And that this started the recycling revolution in the city. So we moved on to bigger things. We said, okay, yes, our basic core job is providing core amenities. So how do we reconvert that process into a more greener process and uh, bring about more uh, eco-friendly initiatives to the city? So there we started with, uh, uh, now the city, I would, I'm proud to say, has about uh, 60 kilometers of plastic roads, which are uh, plastic mixed BT, which I have not put here because it looks like a normal road. And uh, uh, then this tiles that you see, the colorful ones, are uh, tiles made out of recycled plastic, which we have collected in our yards. So, and then you see the rooms, the toilets, uh, there were a lot of other things we have made. And we've recycled about 25 million metric tons of uh, plastic waste in Hyderabad. So that's a, Safi, a huge number and for a city, uh, in India, it is, it's quite large. So these were all the initiatives and then now it is, it's just become mainstream. Everybody is picking up these initiatives. This is how it became mainstream and that's acceptance. So I was not afraid of small changes. I thought, okay, let's start small, then move on to bigger, larger things. And then came the acceptance from people. There were a lot of critics. They did say, okay, is it going to be costly? Is it good? Is it uh, uh, really eco-friendly? What is the process which goes into it? So these were all questions raised at multiple points of time, even by my own colleagues. So, uh, but still we persisted. We said, let's try it out. And it's a small initiative. So with small initiatives, we moved on to bigger things. That's how we got the culture of acceptance going. And then later came the further uh, uh, larger impact initiatives like we've started changing our fleet into a greener fleet, uh, the city fleet, and then moving on to bigger eco projects. So a lot of uh, cities and even in Hyderabad, I used to think, how do we make uh, green initiatives owned by people? How do we, unless we get people into a project, we, were, we are not going to make a success out of it. Maybe it will be just a way of uh, doing a government project. You just do it and go away from it. So lakes were our uh, assets. Hyderabad is known as a city of lakes. So we said, OK, how are we going to reconvert them and make them vibrant places where people can enjoy and also own them? So the ownership to create that, we created a lot of uh, uh, facilities where people could enjoy with children and also restore the lake. And once the lake is restored, what happens when a lot of people start using it? It's, it's owned by someone. 
it is owned by the people of the city. So that's what we aspire to create. We're going slow with this. This is our uh, second project. One at a time, we have done uh, the Miralam Park now, which you see there. Some of you might not have seen it yet in the city, but uh, please do. And um, then we, uh, then another uh, big initiative that I took, which invited a lot of, lots of doubts. I created a dog park. Dog park? People were like, there are no parks for humans out there. So why are you creating something for a dog? That was the question first. I, I didn't know how to answer them in the first way, in the first instance. But then this idea sparked from one old lady coming to us and telling us, I treat my pet as a member of my family. You are creating spaces where people can go. You are creating livable spaces where uh, the entire families can enjoy. Then why can't I enjoy with my pet? And mo some others told me that we cannot take a walk out with my pet because uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, traffic on the roads and then a lot of people don't allow dogs in their societies. So that got us thinking, isn't a city livable for everyone? So there we decided we'll do this. And after doing this, again, the, the support was the, and the love that the city gave was immense. This became the first project of its kind in India. So there, uh, that was the, some of the press reviews that you can see. Then we moved on to other green projects. Why I'm showing these was these projects are not done with any uh, non-eco-friendly material. They were all done with green cement and permeable concrete which lets the water seep, and we used all eco-friendly materials which are locally sourced. So creating that culture itself in an organization was difficult. Trying to tell them what is eco-friendly, what is not, is again a difficult proposition. But then again coming back to a city which is livable for everyone. So is it only parks or recreation that we create? Or is it something where we give opportunities to everyone? That's another concept that we went ahead with. And I create, uh, we went to uh, design this project of having a toilet come marketing place for most of our women. I was into motivating women to move towards green friendly products. They were making cloth bags, jute bags, uh, uh, and paper bags, and a lot of eco-friendly cutlery and all. So these women came one day to us and asked us, where do we market them? Where do I take them to the general public? You've taught us these skills. So again, we moved to this reinvention and then created this initiative. And it also was a major success in the city. After that, I didn't do anything. A lot of people in the city started coming to me with ideas. They said, this is how we make our city better. This is one initiative that I wanted to show like that. This is called Feed the Need. And here we uh, open this concept of public fridges. Fridges were kept in the city and uh, anybody who has uh, excess food just drops it off in your home, you can have it. You can have it in uh, uh, your restaurant which you uh, had an extra meal and uh, you just drop it off in the fridge and whoever is hungry picks it up. This we thought would match the need of reducing food waste and also integrating. You know, do you know that 20% people in the city sleep hungry every night? We didn't. We also waste 25 to 30 percent food. So we had to see that food stays alive for two, three days. So if it's kept in a fridge, we all do that at homes. So why not make it a public initiative? So we did it that and today we are 40 fridges strong. It's going stronger, a lot of support again from the public. So my takeaway to all of you and for uh, this uh, event is that don't be afraid to experiment. A lot of, lot of negativity will come your way. This, can anybody guess what it is? It's a drone, yes, but for what? Right, this is not a clearing drain. It's a drone which is doing mosquito spraying. 
That was done uh, manually before. People used to get into this kind of lakes and start uh, cleaning, uh, spraying the lake so that mosquito doesn't breathe there. It was unhygienic, it was undignified for our workers to get into the water and spray. So how do we do this? It took me a year to think of a solution for this. But I did. Again, a lot of questions. Won't the drone collapse into the water? Won't you drive the drone into somebody's house? This is an open area which we tried out. Uh, so we tried it. And again, amazing results with that. But here, if I was afraid of all these comments, if I was afraid that this, there's so much of negativity on this project, can, can you take it forward? If I lacked confidence in myself or the initiative that I was taking up, could I push it through? Not really. So, this, there, there is, uh, I come back to a statement which Thomas Edison very famously made. If I did not, if I, if I failed in an experiment after trying thousand times, I did it, I, I would think it's learning because I, I would uh, think that I have learned not to do a thing in thousand different ways. So yes, playing with public resources sometimes is very uh, difficult. So in most of uh, my experiments, at least I had taken the support of my team, done a thorough analysis, went back to the board several times. There were several initiatives that I have not been able to carry through, which I have not put on this. But again, I tell you, as and only when we believe that change is possible, number one, and that you can make the change, number two, and believe in the change you want to make, you cannot succeed, ever. If our freedom fighters thought that independence was not possible, would we be here today? So, it's always, life is always for the brave. For anybody who is willing to take the chance, willing to risk it. So, I go back to the uh, first slide that I have said. Again, was I successful or was I significant? I take pride in saying that I, have, I was significant. I might not be recognized for it, not required. Some of you wouldn't have heard of these initiatives. But did I make life better even for a few, one, two, or number of people in small ways or big ways? I feel that I go to bed with that satisfaction. And that is what I would say all of us should think about. Even in small ways, big ways, you, you can choose a different career path. This was my chosen path. And I could do what I wanted and what I thought was for the better of the society. That, with that, I would go back and uh, coming to the, the uh, first quote about significant and success. I didn't bother about success. I was bothered about making a difference, making some significant contribution, and success followed. So, there's uh, again what was there in the last slide, first slide, I would say. The comment that we don't create, we don't move into the future. We are the creators of our future. So, how do we do that? Do we make it better? Do we make it significant? Or do we let it, just let somebody else make a future for you? That is a decision which I would advise all, all of you and take it forward. So thank you, thank you the, for this venue and it's been a pleasure being here.